not what you do, but why you do. Why you do it. So if you're going to set up a business venture, like most of you are aspiring to do, it's not, I'm going to, put, I'm going to set up that business because I'll make a lot of money. No, wrong. You have to set up a business that you're passionate about. You need to set up a business that's something to do with something to do with your talents. Okay? So it's one of your talents that you're using to then make money. Of course, it has to be something that's going to be sold. So you're not going to set up something that nobody wants. So you're going to do your market research. Make sure there's a need out there. Okay? Which doesn't necessarily mean, because when Steve Jobs created Apple and he created the iPad and all these lovely devices and everything, he didn't go out there with focus groups. No, he thought, you know something? I'm going to create something and this technology people are going to want. So he, he had a vision. But he had that talent and he developed that talent. But there was a why behind it. Okay? He had a strong why. The why is really, really important. And I call the why your fuel. So imagine this airplane is doing an air-to-air -air refueling. Okay? The why, why you do something, is the key. Now, we're going to do a little, we're going to play a little game here with everybody. So I want everybody to stand up. Stand up, everybody. Stand up. I want you to spread out because you're going to need a little bit of space to do this. So we've got, we've got room in the, in the room. So just come to the front. Okay, because you're all going to need some space. So just come down here as well. Okay, yep, just space over here. Okay, I want you to spread. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to put your right arm, your right arm out in front of you. Okay, and I want you to swing your right arm to the right or clockwise as it's also said. So just swing it to the right and stop. Okay, can you see how far it goes? You're happy how far it went? Okay, great. Now, come back again. Now, put your, your arms down like this. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes, and I want you to imagine, only in your imagination, only in your mind, I want you to imagine this arm, this right arm out in front of you. And only in your imagination, what I want you to do now is I want you to swing that arm to the right, or clockwise as we say, twice as far as it went before. Only in your mind, now, I want you to feel it. Okay? I want you to feel this arm go twice as far. Okay, now bring the arm back again. Now put the arm out in front of you. Only in your mind. Put the arm out in front of you. Only in your mind. Okay? Now I want you to swing that arm to the right or clockwise as we say. I want you to do it three times further than it went before. Okay? One, two, three. Off it goes. Okay, now I want you to open your eyes, everybody. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Arm out in front. One, two, three. To the right. Okay. What happened? Question to you. What happened? It went further. Everybody sit down. Now, I made you do that first before I explain what actually happened. Because this little exercise is something that I was taught a while back by this gentleman. Well, let me explain this first. This is an approach plate, okay, frequency of what I want to talk about, okay, because this is what we just did now. I made you tune into the right frequency. This is what a pilot has in front of him or her, okay. It's a bit like a sheet of music, and there's all the frequencies on there that you dial into this thing here. You put these frequencies down, okay, which is the control tower, the instrument landing system. You need to put the right frequency in, okay. If you don't put the right frequency, you can't speak to the control tower. Control tower can't give you clearance to land. But more importantly, if you don't put the right navigation frequency in, you're not going to be navigating correctly and you may end up going lower than the glide path and crashing into an obstacle or a mountain. And that's happened quite a few times. And this is what happens actually in the airplane. The display over here on your right hand side is what the pilot mainly uses, okay, which gives them the speed and, and, and heading and everything, and follow, follows this, this cross, which tells them and uh, that tells them they're on the right glide and um, right heading in order to land the aircraft. So what you, they're doing here, the pilot is tuning in to the right frequencies. Okay. Now the reason why your arm didn't go as further as it did the first time compared to the, the second time is because I tuned in a different frequency to you. Okay. I made you dial in a different frequency and it was dialing in that frequency into your mind that you got a better result. So that's really important. So Bob Proctor is the gentleman that introduced me to this concept. I met Bob uh, a few years ago in London. I was speaking at an event when I launched my book. This was 10 years ago. And Bob was speaking at that event as well. And Bob is a big self-development uh, uh, guru, as they, as they call it. He's written a number of books and a number of courses, The Science of Getting Rich, 
and, and, and other things which is very, very interesting. You can tune into Bob Proctor online. There's many, many videos of him on there. And he explains what he does and, and how he works. And what, he, what Bob did is he said to me, he said, for Richard, he said, the mind, what is the mind? Can you draw the mind? And he drew the mind for me. And he said, the mind is you. It's not here. It's you. And then he said, the mind is divided into two. You've got the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. Now, when we go to school, when we, we get information, the information goes into the conscious mind. But what actually dictates our actions is the subconscious mind, which is driven by emotions. And the word emotion itself contains the word motion, which is action. So when you are emotionally engaged with something, whether it's positive or negative, that is what will determine your results. So if you decide to set up a business, and you, you have the money, you have the product, off you go, but in your mind, you're not emotionally positive, you're not emotionally engaged, the action is not going to be an action which is going to bring you positive results. And it all starts in the mind. But how most people think? They think with an in-the-cube attitude. And this is the thing. What dictates what they do with their results? So for example, take someone that's poor. What do they say to themselves? I'm poor. I set up five businesses in the last five years. And I failed at every single one. I'm a failure. This is what they say. This is, this is the subconscious mind. That's the feeling that they're getting. So the result determines the result is what they look at. And that result makes them think in a negative way. So if I'd said to you before, instead of moving your hand twice as far or three times as far, if I said half as far, it would have gone half as far. Because it's all up here. So this is what's happening. So the results is they're poor, they're, they've been a failure of business, this is what they're thinking. That brings these negative emotions, and the negative emotions brings the actions, which then brings the negative results. This is why the poor people keep becoming poorer and poorer. This is why people that fail keep failing and failing and failing. But you can change. You can change. And a lot of the reasons why these people fail, if we think of the five sides of the queue, the atmosphere, the education, the whole money thing, the health thing, the whole system, the way it's designed, is to make people fail. Because if people fail, I can control them. If people succeed and, 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 and decide to make a difference, I can't control those people. Okay? So leadership is based on thinking outside the queue. So how are we going to reverse this process? We've got to think outside the queue. And so how do we do that? Success, and the key to success, is starting with your thoughts. So instead of looking at your results, what you need to do is look at the results and ask yourself the question, why did I fail at those businesses? Now over the last 18 months, after Tyrus Wings launched and was successful, we launched another two ventures. The, one venture was in the classic car business and one was in the golf events business. I personally put money into both of those ventures and both ventures failed. So I could say, well, I succeeded at one out of three, okay, that's good. But I said to myself, why did those two other ventures fail? And the reason why it failed is I, I basically hired the wrong people. The two business partners I had in those two businesses, they weren't the right people to make this business succeed. So we lost, we lost quite a bit of money on those two ventures. Okay? But the, the lesson I learned is I should have spent more time trying to find out more about the mindset of these two people. Because one of them had, a, had been successful in business in the past. And I thought, well, I'll back this guy because he's got a track record. The problem was he hadn't updated himself. And now with the internet on here, you need to be doing something online. Social media is so important. Learning to use social media and connect with people all over the world with social media. I mean, you're here today, and there's people from all over the world in this room right now. And that's fantastic. Because once you guys graduate, you'll probably go back to your own countries or go elsewhere. And you will, probably in five years' time, you'll be spread out across the world. But guess what? You can still be connected. You can be connected through Facebook. You can post photographs, stuff on there, connect via LinkedIn, do a YouTube video, show people what you're up to, show people what business you've just, you've just launched and whatever. And you guys are in school together. So you can keep that relationship going. So social media is so important. So going back to the thinking outside the queue, so even if you have failed in the past, you need to look at what you have learned from those failures, and now those lessons become a positive. 
And then you have to have a vision. Why am I doing this? What's this going to be like in five to ten years' time? And create a vision board. I, I, in my house, we have vision boards. So what we do is we cut out what we'd like to have, what we'd like to achieve, and put it on the board. And we, and we look at this vision board every day. The dream house, the play, the yacht, whatever you want to aspire to. Have your own family. All, this, all these kind of goals that you may have. It's important to aim high. My father was said to me, he said, I left Italy when I was 20 years old. He was in a small town just outside a place called Ascoli Piceno, which is on the east coast of, of Italy. And his mum was a simple lady. She didn't have much of an education. She said to my father, she said, Angelo, you're going to a foreign land. You don't speak the language, but do one thing, please, my son. Mix with successful people. Mix with people that are better than you. Because that will rub off on you. And my father taught me this. So he said to me all the time, he said, remember, wherever you go, tune into the successful people. When you go into a new company, a new organization, or a new business, tune into those that have got there before you and find out how. The other people's experience that Jim Rohn talks about. It's so important because that's going to help you with your thoughts, with your mindset. Because you say, it's actually possible. I'm tuning into Zoella. Look what Zoella has done. Incredible. Okay, look what the piano guys have done. Look what Elon Musk has done. Look what Steve Jobs has done. There's people out there doing stuff. Young people as well. Mark Zuckerberg started Facebook in his 20s. And look where he is now. He's one of the richest people in the world. But he had a vision. He had ideas. He thought outside the cube. So it's those thoughts, those positive thoughts, that positive environment around you that's going to create those thoughts. Like you thought of the arm going three times further, and it did. It was the thinking. It's that's where it needs to start. Because those thoughts are going to excite you. That excitement creates those feelings. How am I going to feel when I live in that nice villa? How am I going to feel when I can see my book on the bookshelves in a bookstore in Toronto? And I walk in there and I see my book on the bookshelf. How am I going to feel? Okay, and it's those feelings. So run those images in your mind. How are you going to feel? Because it's the feeling, the emotion, that's going to create the motion, the action. And the action would then turn into results. And you will hit obstacles. There will be people that tell you it can't be done. There will be banks that will tell you they're not going to lend you money. There will be all sorts of doors shut in your face. That's going to happen. But what's going to keep you going is that grit, that determination. That's what's going to keep you going. But above all, it's the why. Why am I doing this? The vision, what it's going to be like when you achieve that goal. That's what kept me going, the tire of swings. It wasn't easy. We hit many obstacles, but we kept going. And you need to keep going. And if you haven't got the solution, tap into other people's experience. And in closing, here we go, this is the environment around you. What you watch, who you listen to, what you read, will influence what you think, which will determine your actions. And that's pretty much the summary of what I've been talking to you about this evening. So watch what you listen to, what you're watching, the people around you, what ideas are put into your heads. Are these things going to create the positive image, those positive emotions in my life that's going to take me towards my goals? Because if it isn't, you've got to change the environment, you've got to change what's going on in your head. So important. And because we live in a world today where we are bombarded with information more than ever, we've got to be careful. So I created this podcast show called Living Outside the Cube. We did 14 episodes last year, and we're just about to start up again. And the new episodes will be out in the new year. I've got some really interesting people I'm going to be interviewing. It's free. You can download it, listen to it for half an hour. We're going to do about two to three a month. We'll be interviewing successful business people and business and successful thinkers around the world. And we'll be releasing. There's already about 14 episodes available. You can find them on, 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 on the website. Um, and that's one thing you can tune into to learn about what other people are doing and, and tune into some positive news instead of CNN or BBC. And in closing, so the progress of humankind, as you've seen and as we've talked about this evening, has always happened as a result of someone thinking and acting outside the cube. So you've got to be bold and be that someone.